The world seems to be heading to a very dark place. Israel is venturing deeper into the concrete jungle that is Gaza and gearing up for the next stage of its armed conflict with Hamas. Israeli forces have isolated the city from sea, land and air. However, Israel and Hamas possess widely different military capabilities. And whenever there is a disparity in resources and capabilities, the smaller and less technologically advanced force usually employs asymmetrical tactics to leverage the vulnerabilities of the larger, more conventionally equipped military. Hamas's secret weapon, its trump card, sits underneath the surface. For more than a decade, Hamas has been engineering a vast network of tunnels filled with weapons, ammunition and living quarters for its fighters. Much of this subterranean infrastructure is unknown. What is known, however, is that these tunnels were meticulously crafted to neutralize the technological superiority of the Israeli military. Entering this underground network is a trap in every sense of the way. So, in the forthcoming months, as Israel rolls out its strategy, it must have the foresight to imagine, but also the guts to fail. The conflict in Gaza is in full swing. Military operations can take months, However, not everyone seems to grasp the level of commitment that is required. There is an increasing left versus right divide on news coverage. Both sides are telling their respective audiences different stories with different expectations. Using ground news, I can see the growing information gap with pinpoint accuracy. This article, for instance, talks about the extended fight in Gaza. It has been covered by 22 news sources, nearly all are from either left or center-leaning sources, making it a total blind spot for right-leaning readers. It's precisely this kind of bias that eventually results in reckless policymaking because societies don't know what they're signing up for. Still more interesting, scrolling down, I can see that over half the news sources originate from media conglomerates. These are collections of news outlets that are owned by the same entity. The numbers that we're seeing here are troubling. It goes to show that people who are stuck in media bubbles will only be getting one side of the story, oftentimes tailored to specific political interests. In my view, Ground News' approach to media is right on the money. You can use my link ground.news slash Caspian to subscribe to Ground News today and take advantage of 40% off their Vantage plan. It's their biggest discount of the year. You'll get unlimited access to their app, website and newsletters for just $5 a month. I encourage you to check it out. So start reading the news the right way and watch your perspective expand. A nuanced conflict is taking shape in Gaza, both beneath and above the ground. Israeli contingents have entered the city from the north and east, cutting it off from the rest of the Strip. By doing so, the Israelis are settling in for a long, protracted war, one where they'll have to navigate urban and tunnel warfare with grave risks. These types of environments negate technological advantages and make way for asymmetric warfare. Therefore, the conflict in Gaza stands apart from typical conventional conflicts. Distinguishing between civilians and soldiers is problematic and the front lines are unclear. So, unlike in Ukraine, asymmetric warfare has no clear moving lines on the map. The opponent can and will operate behind enemy lines. During the Vietnam War, American superiority in bomber aircraft, artillery and other weaponry was effectively nullified by the Viet Cong's use of underground tunnels. Guerrilla fighters would ambush American and South Vietnamese troops and then disappear without a trace. Likewise, in Gaza, Hamas enjoys a similar tactical advantage. However, while the Viet Cong tunnels stretched over long distances, the Hamas tunnels are more like labyrinths condensed into a small space. Back in 2021, the Israeli Defense Forces 
claimed to have destroyed more than 100 kilometers of tunnels in airstrikes. This is the layout they uncovered. The Israelis dubbed the network as the Gaza Metro. So the subterranean infrastructure in Gaza is of higher density and sophistication. Some of the tunnels are built for covert weapons smuggling, hidden from Israeli surveillance. Others are commercial tunnels that generate revenue from goods smuggled across the border with Egypt. Still others serve as command centers, ammunition storage and living quarters for Hamas militants. Regardless of the circumstances, fighting in these tunnels will be excruciating. Every aspect of tunnel warfare favors the defending side. Hamas will have plenty of opportunities for surprise attacks and can control the timing and nature of engagements. Simply put, the initiative will favor Hamas. The full extent and complexity of the Hamas tunnel network, including its total depth and reach, remains unknown to the Israelis. Hamas officials claim to have constructed more than 500 kilometers of tunnels beneath the city and that some parts of it are deep and wide enough for motorbike transportation. To put this into perspective, 500 kilometers of tunnels is roughly half the length of the New York City subway system. Whatever one thinks of Hamas, the group possesses impressive engineering prowess. Hamas has had over a decade and millions of dollars in backing from Iran to invest in these tunnels. So yeah, the myriad applications of this underground network will vex the capacity of the Israeli military and push it to its limits, both physically and psychologically. In layman's terms, Israel cannot depend solely on technological means to overcome Hamas. Still worse, the tunnels belonging to Hamas differ from those employed by the Viet Cong or ISIS. The Hamas tunnels are located underneath one of the most densely populated areas on the planet. The Gaza Strip is home to over 2 million people, with at least a million living in the northern half where Gaza City is situated. Urban warfare has never been easy. It constrains combined arms and makes large-scale military operations fraught with moral, ethical and political pitfalls. In Gaza, the extent of support for Hamas among the Palestinian population remains unclear. As a result, the fortunes of both combatants and civilians have become closely intertwined. For instance, Hamas has booby-trapped houses, buildings, roads, and frequently uses civilian infrastructure as human shields and command centers. This is not to mention the hostages that Hamas holds. While Vietnam, Fallujah, and Mosul offer valuable insights, they don't fully capture what lies ahead for the Israelis in this context. Additionally, the Hamas tunnels symbolize a new paradigm in warfare. Every strike below ground will have political repercussions above. In the coming months, with the international community watching closely, Israel's commitment to international law, human rights and peace building will come under intense scrutiny. The decisions Israel makes and how they are viewed will influence public opinion in America and Europe for better or worse. Therefore, the Israelis must lean on psychological operations to streamline their public relations machine, as each military action and strike will require justification on the global stage. Consequently, the conflict in Gaza is as much a diplomatic battle as it is a physical one. All these asymmetric aspects, such as tunnel warfare, urban warfare, local support, hostages, human shields, and psychological operations, will test the limits of Israel's capacity for a prolonged conflict. What awaits the Israelis in Gaza will be a ruthless fight. Knowing this, the Israeli leadership has come up with a unique strategy aimed at circumventing the strengths of Hamas and imposing its own terms on the battlefield. Since Israel cannot afford to engage in asymmetric combat, whether in the streets or in the tunnels, it wants to instead smoke out Hamas fighters without moving in on them directly. The aim is to isolate Hamas fighters by disrupting their access to essential resources such as finances, raw materials, technology and manpower rather than confronting them head-on. 
This strategy seeks to indirectly target the upper echelons of the Hamas hierarchy to undermine their operational capabilities. While tunnel warfare might become unavoidable later on, at this initial phase of the conflict, Israel is focusing on an operation characterized by precision, intelligence gathering, and measured pace. In many ways, the current policy mirrors aspects of Operation Protective Edge, but with a more comprehensive outline. Back then, in July and August of 2014, Israel conducted a series of direct assaults on fortified positions and tunnel networks in Gaza. The operation was launched in response to a barrage of Hamas missiles and rockets aimed at Israeli civilian areas within Israel. At first, the Israeli Air Force bombarded sites in Gaza, but when the aerial campaign failed to deter Hamas, Israel escalated to a ground offensive. That sounds awfully familiar to what we're seeing today. This time, however, the Israeli ground offensive seeks regime change in Gaza rather than strictly deterrence. In the current ground offensive, Israel's Yahalom unit plays a key role. For context, Yahalom is a specialized engineering unit adept in urban warfare, particularly skilled in detecting and dismantling underground structures. The idea is that Yahalom will infiltrate and raid specific Hamas tunnel networks to collect high-level intelligence. This intelligence is then used to identify additional Hamas command centers and officers, as well as critical infrastructure like generators and ventilation systems, which are crucial for the maintenance of the Hamas tunnels. The hope is that the gathered intelligence continuously feeds into itself. Intel from one raid leads to another, which produces more intel and more raids, and so on. This cycle continues until the hierarchy of Hamas erodes and becomes dysfunctional. All the while, Hamas loses manpower, its tunnel infrastructure decays, and its ability to manufacture and deploy missiles, rockets, and armed drones is impaired. Through this approach, Israel aims to eliminate as many Hamas officers as possible without fully engaging in tunnel combat. What happens after remains uncertain, but the Israeli leadership plans to cross that bridge when it comes to it. Nonetheless, with so many moving parts, a lot can go wrong. Counterinsurgency is always complicated, urban warfare even more so. Fighting an asymmetric war in a place as compact and dense as Gaza is fraught with political blowback. So Israel looks to depopulate the city before going all in. At present, Israeli forces have cut the strip in two, and Israeli authorities have repeatedly warned about 1.1 million people living in Gaza City to move south out of harm's way. At least 700,000 people have done so, but evacuating on such short notice in the middle of a war zone is not doable for everyone. Roughly 350,000 Palestinians remain in northern Gaza, stuck and immobilized. Meanwhile, those who did relocate to the south are now facing a humanitarian crisis. The local infrastructure was not designed to cope with such a massive influx of people. There are no facilities in place, and people have nowhere to go. They can't cross the border into Egypt for political reasons. The result is a humanitarian catastrophe. Furthermore, as part of its strategy to strangle Hamas, Israel has stopped fuel shipments into Gaza. The Israelis say Hamas appropriates fuel to operate its power generators for its tunnel operations. However, in doing so, there is a trade-off. Denying fuel to Gaza not only targets Hamas, but also severely affects civilians. Local hospitals are running low on fuel needed for emergency generators. These generators are vital for powering life-saving equipment like incubators and other critical medical devices. Another trade-off is that the Hamas leadership in Gaza City might escape to the south since Israel does not intend to deploy a large ground force in Gaza. What's more, leaving the Hamas tunnel infrastructure intact means that Hamas fighters and officers could potentially use these tunnels to sustain themselves beyond the current hostilities. And that's the thing with asymmetric warfare. There is no universal roadmap to overcome it. 
Every conflict is unique and the Israeli strategy reflects the type of asymmetrical warfare necessary in Gaza. However, what's missing in the Israeli plan is an end game. Hamas is not a state. Nobody from the group will raise a white flag. So the prospect of a decisive military victory as seen in other conventional conflicts is improbable. In all likelihood, Hamas will survive this conflict, if not as an organization, then as an ideology. Some other faction will come to take its place. At large, Hamas embodies the idea that Jewish people must be permanently evicted from the Middle East through violence. This idea appeals to many Palestinians because there is no real diplomatic horizon to which they can join their hopes. The only way to overcome the idea that Hamas embodies is to come up with a better idea, one that does not assume a zero-sum game. Israeli lawmakers have yet to determine what that would look like or what parameters define a victory in Gaza. So if Israel is to defeat Hamas, it must foremost establish political objectives for its aftermath. It must craft its terms for victory diligently, prioritizing a larger political vision than just Hamas and Gaza. And overall, to secure lasting peace, Israel needs to reboot its entire approach to the civilian Palestinian population. What Israel cannot do is hammer the Palestinians into submission. Without a political resolution in place, the endemic roots of extremism that exist in Gaza will see a new militant movement emerge in a matter of years. Hamas, being an ideological entity, cannot be eradicated through bullets and bombs. Ideas are impervious to physical force. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report, so if you haven't yet subscribed, now is a good time to do so. Just remember to click the bell icon, otherwise you'll still be missing out on our latest content. Thank you for watching and Sagol.